Consume and share news today that is largely rooted in social media outlets. A reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Yerika. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. So this is a story that has engulfed all of my social media and, frankly mm-hmm. speaking, major headlines. I mean, just the fact that these kinds of tours are offered, I think, shocked most of us. Yeah. That was readily available, and of course. The missing submersible. So let's get the latest. Yeah. So I'm sure everybody knows mm-hmm. by now the backstory. That, yeah. Yes, exactly. So the, it, this uh, this submersible. Mm-hmm. So it's not even a submarine. It, it's really small, compact yeah. to say the it, least. So we can't even classify it as a submarine. Can it, we? It basically cannot go out into the deep sea alone. Yeah. It has to be carried on a mothership. Yep. Yep. And uh, it, it's been missing since mm-hmm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was on a trip to view the wreckage of the sunken Titanic. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so they've been searching for this tiny little uh, submersible. Mm. And uh, yesterday, there was some new development. Mm. So crews searching for this missing sub heard what they described as banging sounds Mm -hmm. at 30-minute intervals yesterday. Okay. And then, after additional sonar devices were deployed, banging noises were still heard Mm. and uh, this is according to a US government internal memo Uh, it was unclear at exactly what time this banging was heard Mm. and it also remains uncertain whether these sounds originated from the missing vessel carrying five individuals so in the deep sea Mm. I mean uh, take into account it's really hard to get the accurate information they find the leads Mm -hmm. and then they send essentially more troops more yeah. devices to make sure that the sound is coming from the missing submersible. Now, the, th- the thing is, the development got everyone's hopes skyrocketing. Yep. And, you know, there were actually expert analysis pointing to the possibility yeah. that it could be coming from that missing vessel in the first place. But it does make us think that time really is against those who are still surviving inside. Exactly. Um, David Gallo, who is an American oceanographer who co-led an expedition to map the Titanic mm-hmm. wreckage, Uh, One of his friends is in the sub that is currently missing. He emphasized the urgency of the situation. They're literally fighting against time. Um, This is what he said, quote, time is of the essence because once you have an area where you know that the bangs are coming from, you need to get assets there. Mm whatever that might be, submarines, Mm. robots, over that spot to investigate. He said there's no time to sit and analyze. That's right, because once you've analyzed it, it might be too late to get, let's say, for example, submarines down there to actually essentially pull the missing vessel up to the shore. Yes, that's right. And uh, that's that's going to be a tricky operation indeed, even if they find this missing Mm. uh, submersible. uh, It's going to take a lot of time to actually, you know, conduct the the rescue operation so the ocean can type ocean gate titan mm-hmm. excuse me submersible disappeared during its descent to the titanic wreckage in the north atlantic ocean on sunday you said right june yeah. 18th it went off the radar approximately one hour and 45 minutes mm-hmm. into its planned uh, journey uh the submersible uh is now only has a few hours of oxygen remaining um circumstances surrounding its disappearance still remain unclear Mm. Uh, potential scenarios, this is according to experts and news reports, include power loss, entanglement with a piece of the Titanic, or even an implosion mm. resulting from structural flaws in the submersible. Can we talk about a detail that has emerged since? Yeah, so a former employee of OceanGate warned back in 2018 that the sub's safety could be compromised by what he described as poor quality control and safety protocols. And and uh, paying passengers would not be aware of that. Uh, the same employee alleged that he was wrongfully terminated after raising these concerns 
about the company's refusal to conduct critical, non-destructive testing of the experimental design of the Titan. It may be too early for us to talk about uh, who's responsible for maybe not conducting safety uh, quality checks. Um, I mean, uh, a former employee sounded the alarm years ago, Mm. so has anything been done since? However, in the meantime, it's probably more important to talk about saving the human lives, right? That's right. Uh, The discovery of that very uh, 30-minute interval banging sounds opens opens up the possibility that the passengers may still be surviving. It's prompted search efforts to be intensified. Yeah. You know, based on uh, this morning's latest news reports, I I heard that the search area has now expanded Mm -hmm. to twice the size of the state of Connecticut. Okay, yes, so I mean, e- even before it was pretty expansive yep. and they've expanded from there further on. Okay, That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the conditions of the mm-hmm. passengers, uh, you know, you know, I've been thinking a lot about what it must might be down there. Um, you know, experts have said that uh, this vessel would probably extremely still as well as the passengers. It's probably really cold down there yeah. if there is a power failure. It's dark. Yeah, it's dark. It's completely dark inside. Uh, there would be condensation from <sighs> breath. Uh, accumulating on the cold hull. Uh, the, the space is really confined. Mm. You know, there are no seats that would restrict movement. Uh, this could potentially lead to numbness and cramping mm. in the limbs. And, uh, you know, experts say maintaining composure mm. and avoiding panic would be absolutely crucial for the passengers to conserve uh, their very limited air supply now uh, <sighs> under these extremely challenging circumstances. I must say that's more easily said than done. Yep. Imagine the circumstances. Mm-hmm. All right, so if we get any updates on the rescue efforts, yep. of course, listeners, you'll be the first ones to know that's the latest. Let's move on to our second buzzword of the day. So, of course, shopping is a pretty big buzzword in the tourism sector in yep. South Korea, and even for locals, it's a big thing. In fact, we have lots of dedicated channels that's where right. you can directly buy things off of TV, essentially, mm-hmm. and YouTube Korea has noticed. In fact, the streaming giant decided maybe Korea is a good place to do a test <laughs> run, yeah. and here we are. YouTube Korea has launched launching uh, a shopping channel for live commerce later this month on June 30th. Uh, The channel is going to provide a live commerce platform to companies. It also plans to live stream shopping content with around 30 brands at launch. Mm. And this is the first time YouTube is opening an official shopping channel in any country in the world. Does any other Soulites feel a little bit uncomfortable with the idea they decided we are the market? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite not surprising at all. Mm. YouTube is one of the world's top social platforms. They want to stay relevant. It's yeah. up to up, you know, with the times essentially. And the demand is here. Yes, exactly. Now, based on its global advertising audience reach numbers, as of April 23rd, uh, YouTube has at least 2.5 billion users around the world. Um, by country, India, the U.S., and Brazil are the top three mm. YouTube users in the world. Back in 2018, South Korea ranked number one, but it's no longer in the top 10. South Korea currently has 46 million mm. active YouTube users. Um, 45 to 54 year olds in Korea were the largest group uh, at 61 percent, and that age bracket was followed by those in the 18 to 24. Uh, age bracket at 57%. Is anyone surprised? else surprised by those numbers? Because I think I simplify the narrative just mm. to better understand how do we get news? How do we get information? Yeah. And I just group that the younger generation is all about different social media outlets, mm-hmm. including streaming giants. And then the older generation yeah. get their news through the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, you know, the, the figure shows you otherwise, right? Otherwise. And yeah. it, it, it makes us rethink mm-hmm. perhaps these myths that we've created to oversimplify narratives. That's right. You know, last year, YouTube rolled out a new shopping tab in its Explore section. (laughs) Uh, The feature allows uh, eligible creators Mm. to tag products Mm. in their live streams or list products under their videos and viewers can purchase Mm. those products. Um, Yeah, I mean, all of this is very still, you know nascent. It's it's still very in its early stages, right? but the company says it's seeing a lot of potential and that the platform is making it easier for people to shop from the creators brands and the content they love. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, have you ever watched some watch for something online or even through these movies mm-hmm. and TV shows and think, ooh, I want that shirt. And if I can just click on that shirt and yep. it sends me straight into a shopping site, That's right. it would be made all too Mm -hmm. simple do you think if it if we don't do the search for it anymore it takes away the joy 
Imagine that conversation. You know what? I think so. Sometimes, For me, at least. Sometimes it's about the process, yeah. the hunt, um, the search itself, where you obtain knowledge about how the clothes is made, who made it, and whatnot. You know what, actually? You make a really good point there, because I love searching. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love looking through uh, products. Perusing. Yes, exactly. And then I put it in the shopping cart. Mm. And then I, I give myself at least a, a few hours, or maybe a day. And I then give I give myself days. And then I go back, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't want this anymore. See, See you know what I mean? This entire process, yeah. and everyone has our process, and I'm not trying to undermine one mm-hmm. over the other, but the idea is when something comes to you so easily, yep. we don't like it anymore. You're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not to rain all over YouTube Korea's no, no. parade, but just, uh, you know, food for thought. Yep. All right, on to our final story today. So yesterday, turns out, was not only the International <laughs> Day of Yoga, but it was also International, I'm sorry, World Giraffe Day. Yeah. <laughs> We literally have a day to celebrate everything. All things good. I mean, giraffes are good. Uh, giraffes are wonderful. I yeah. mean, they look so strange to me. I mean, they're the closest thing to dinosaurs. Um, they uh, look like they're super long think. necks. Yes. Did you know that yes. uh, our producer's favorite animal in the world is giraffes? It's hard for me to ignore it. It was her main picture <laughs> on her. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday was World Giraffe Day, mm-hmm. and uh, Everland released uh, the name and photo of the recently born baby giraffe, Maru, <laughs> in Lost Valley, which is the Parks Ecological Safari. And let's be honest, baby animals are just all cute. It <laughs> yeah. makes you feel warm and fuzzy, yep. and sometimes that's all we need. That's yeah. right. This is the first time the information was shared on their social media platforms, including Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. So they get a lot of buzz. That's right. So Maru is a male baby giraffe. Uh, he was born to his father, Seven, who was born in 2007, and his mother, Hanu, uh, oh. born in 2009. And uh, yeah, Maru was born on May 29th. Uh, just over 20 days old now. Mm. He's really healthy. Mm-hmm. Stands at a height of over two meters. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. He's a baby, but he's way taller than I us. I was going to say 20 <laughs> days young, two meter. Isn't You're that going... photo just so adorable? It almost looks fake to yeah, me. Yeah, right? I, look, look how stern this male <laughs> baby giraffe stands. Oh, so <laughs> cute. Anyways, uh, the name Maru is a pure Korean word that means sky. Mm. The name was actually chosen mm. with the participation of uh, eight. 860 customers mm. at the Everland Zoo Neighbor Cafe Zootopia mm-hmm. over a long weekend period starting from June 12th. Um, I have a question for you. Do you know why June 21st was designated as World Draft Day? Let's ask your listeners that question as well. June 21st, 21st. Yeah. 0621. 0621. Does that mean something? Can we flip it on it? <laughs> Does it spell out something? <laughs> uh, yesterday, by the way, was uh, summer solstice, and that's a clue. The longest day of summer the year. day of it. Yeah. Uh, long necks. You're yeah. kidding. No. <laughs> Either that's, that's so clever or so <laughs> confusing. The fact that we had to explain it. But, yeah. but, but now I can never forget. So maybe right? it's working. Sadly, the population <laughs> of wild giraffes uh. has dwindled to approximately 80,000 worldwide. Okay, so yeah. usually these animal days mm. are designated to raise awareness about yep. a depleting yep. population in the mm-hmm. wild. So there you have it. Yep. Happy belated giraffe day. <laughs> to you too. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. You if you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.